This episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Be sure and check them out and be sure and use the promo code Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. A little over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot, and most of it the hard way. And I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. This is episode number 295 of the Practice of Therapy podcast, and I'm Gordon Brewer, and glad you're with me on this journey, and glad you have um, are listening to the podcast, and if this is your first time discovering us, glad you're here, and if you're coming back for more, hope you'll take time to follow us or subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it. So I'm I'm looking forward to you hearing from my guest in this episode. He's no stranger to this podcast, and uh, he's a person that I've really gotten to know much better over the last year or two, uh, and that is the one and only Ernesto Segismundo. And Ernesto and I are um, have, have really kind of hit it off and become really good friends, um, in particular around these issues that we're going to talk about in this, in this episode. Um, both Ernesto and I have been kind of thrust into the role of caregivers. Um, I've shared on the podcast here in the past that my wife is disabled and you know, unfortunately, we've moved into that season where we've started hospice care for her, and there's a whole story around all of that. I'm not going to go into it now, but Ernesto is finding himself in the same place with his dad. So I invite you to listen in on our conversation just about how you handle these tough things in life and just ha- handle our own mental health um, when it comes to dealing with these these things that just put us in sometimes in a really dark place. And so Ernesto gets really vulnerable. We really get kind of vulnerable with each other and just uh, talking about this, this particular topic. And so uh, grab your tissue box, but um, yeah, but hopefully it won't bring you down too much because I think overall, one of the things that both Ernesto and I hold on to is, uh, is a lot of hope just about um, the future. We also talk a little bit about our faith and how that has influenced us and in just being able to find support and meaning in our lives through that. So um, anyway, I think you're going to find it to be a very interesting conversation. And I'm really grateful to Ernesto for being so vulnerable and willing to talk about this topic. And so, um, yeah, so we'll get to that here in just a minute. Before we get to that, though, I would love for you to check out something, and that is the Practice Launch Club, particularly if you're in those beginning stages of starting a private practice. The Practice Launch Club is a membership community I started a few years ago specifically for those people in those beginning stages. We meet twice a month for a for a mastermind or Zoom call that um, where we talk about the different things that people are working on. Also, with uh, the membership comes a library of tutorials and little mini courses that you can go through just about the di- various aspects of starting a private practice, from the financial side to marketing, all the different things that we don't learn in graduate school. And the 
the big thing that the Practice Launch Club provides is community. And uh, we, as I mentioned, we mentioned, we um, get together twice a month for a Zoom call, but also we interact in between between meetings through our circle platform and it's a private platform where you can go on and ask questions and interact much like you would on a facebook group uh but it's not on facebook for a reason but uh anyway i don't want to digress too much anyway invite you to go over and check it out and also from now until the end of september uh if you will sign up and use the promo code PLC fall 2023, you can get $20 off your monthly membership as long as you are a member. So be sure and check it out. And you can find that by practice, going to practiceoftherapy.com slash launch club. Again, that's practiceoftherapy.com slash launch club. And there'll be links here in the show notes and the show summary. So you can get to that easier. And also, real quickly, before we get to my conversation with Ernesto, uh, be sure and listen to one of the members of the Sightcraft Network, which is a network that this podcast and several other great podcasts are part of, and also our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. Hey there, Daniel Fava here, and if you don't know me, I'm the host of the Private Practice Elevation Podcast, where I share online marketing strategies and interviews to help private practice owners attract more clients and scale their businesses. The Private Practice Elevation Podcast is part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts, and I'm super excited to be a part of this network alongside Gordon and the great work he's doing. If you haven't discovered the Private Practice Elevation Podcast yet, you can find it wherever you listen to your podcast. I'd love for you to join me as we explore topics like building an effective website for your private practice, search engine optimization, content marketing, and copywriting, as well as my conversations with experienced private practice owners about scaling a practice, outsourcing, team leadership, and all things that will help you elevate your business and create the life you love. Be sure to check us out at privatepracticeelevation.com for resources and content to help you in your online marketing journey. One of the keys to a successful private practice is having the right systems and processes in place to make things run as smoothly as possible. With a system like Therapy Notes, you'll have more time to spend with what matters most, your clients. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, create rich documentation, and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Your clinical records will be secure with less paperwork, which means you can give a much better quality of care. It's the EHR that Gordon uses in his practice. Be sure to check them out today by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes, and be sure to use the promo code Gordon to get two months free. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast, and I'm so thrilled to have back with me my good friend, Ernesto Segismundo. Hey, Ernesto. Thank you so much again for having me. <laughs> yes, yes. So Ernesto and I have really, uh, really connected over this last year, just uh, in different ways, and just uh, part of it is is parallel journeys in our life and all of that sort of thing. Uh, but Ernesto, as I start most of the podcast, why don't you tell folks just a little more about yourself, yeah. who you are, although I can't imagine that anybody listening to the podcast doesn't know about Ernesto at this point. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. I create businesses. Um, I have a group practice in California. We're also uh, licensed here in the state of Nevada. And um, lately I have been, and, and I do re- retreats and summits as well too. So that's one of my passions. And yeah, so uh, former videographer, um, many of you have maybe heard of filmit.com. I'm actually bringing back filmit.com awesome. uh, in, in the next few months here. Uh, I noticed that video marketing and AI artificial intelligence is coming back. And so, you know, there's a lot of great features out there for 
uh, videographers and folks. So yeah, that's, that's who I am in a nutshell. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you're back with me on the podcast and and this will probably happen several times in the future i'm sure well we'll be uh swapping podcasts i've been on ernesto's new podcast tell mm-hmm. folks a little bit about that yeah it's called the not your typical psychotherapist podcast it's basically a podcast for all of you who are not your typical psychotherapists who i believe that are innovative creative and forward thinkers and risk takers you know in this mm-hmm. field so uh that podcast is de- definitely dedicated to all of you Yes, yes. So, well, I know, Ernesto, our our conversation we had talked about, I think, as I mentioned, we've got kind of some parallel journeys here. And I know one of the things for you here recently that you've been very vulnerable with and shared a good bit about is just uh, having to care for your dad, who's Mm -hmm. um, kind of in that last season of life. And I know for me, same situation with my wife, but um, how are you coping? You know, it, that's a very challenging question to answer, right? Um, coping goes out the door with so many things, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And, you know, for those of you notice, uh, the tone on my social media posts has drastically changed. In fact, I'm kind of non-existent mm-hmm. on that. And I had no idea the how powerful... Th- the heaviness in my heart is and you know at the same time when you're juggling businesses it not only interferes but also makes life you question a lot of things right Mm -hmm. the one of the things that i i I am experiencing is a level of loneliness Mm -hmm. and the lack of control so just to back up my dad um, right now, he's in hospice care, and there's levels of hospice care, right? There's there's folks who are just bedridden. They cannot exist. They, they, their bodies are pretty much, they're just there waiting to die. Basically, mm-hmm. that's what it is. But the type of hospice care that my dad is in is basically, you know, he he's, he's alive and well. He moves around. Um, uh, sometimes he doesn't. He's in deep dementia, and he has a type of dementia that is, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Benjamin Button, mm-hmm. where he he gets younger and younger and younger, right? But he has a mind of a very old individual. So mm-hmm. my dad has, you know, a mind of a, a toddler, but a body of an 89-year-old man. And right. so he tries to get up and moves around and thinks he can still do things. And it's a challenge, not only for my family, but also for the nursing. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm here in Vegas. My They're there taking care of him. And, you know, when you have that gap, not only in a physical gap, uh, but mentally, all the things that you're thinking about, is he okay? Is he going to get hurt? All of those things, even though that there are trustable nurses that would k- take care of him. But th- another layer to the, this is worrying about my sisters mm-hmm. who are caregivers for him. And so, you know, uh, I'm here trying to work all of my businesses out, right? Mm-hmm. Just trying to sustain uh, things while at the same time, this thing is going on, you know, a- across the the seas. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I feel for you, Ernesto, because it's, uh, it's just uncanny how parallel are things. My wife is also in hospice care. Mm. And then also uh, here more recently, my mom, who is 88, who lives five hours away from me. So I can't really drop everything and go, but um, like, like you, it's fallen on my brother and sister to kind of take care of, of my mom. Who's had an infection in her elbow. They can't seem to get cleared up and she's in the hospital now and all of that sort of thing. So yeah. And then juggling, juggling what we're doing in our businesses, trying to maintain a practice, uh, maintain, just the, uh, the other entrepreneurial things that I know we're both in, involved in. Um, yeah, it, you, it really changes your perspective. And I, I don't know what you're experiencing, but I, I think the hardest thing for me is giving myself permission to just slow down and just say, 
no to some things. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's, that's the difficult part is the noticing, mm -hmm. you know, and it, mm -hmm. there are times when I just want to be away and I got to be honest with you. Um, anger, resentment, sadness, mm -hmm. anxiety to a, a whole new level just really, really goes through me, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a daily thing. Even when people say, how do you take care of yourself or here are some five self-care tips, even that kind of does not resonate with me because, mm -hmm. you know, it sucks to be in this body um, mm -hmm. because of all of the emotions. And, you know, I understand um, how people get so taken over the edge that their reason, you know, leaves them just because mm -hmm. of all of these things going on, right? Um, but what really keeps me sustained is my faith. Um, mm -hmm. No matter how difficult it is, uh, you know, I try to tap into that spirituality that I'm not alone, but even mm -hmm. that kind of causes a lot of anger. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I bounce back and go, okay, you know what? If it, it's not for God, if it's not for anything, um, I there's got to be a reason for all of this these things that 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 I'm going through. So mm -hmm. you know, I I want to be able to one day tell a story that oh my gosh, um, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make this mm -hmm. happen. I'm gonna make everything okay, mm -hmm. and God's gonna make it okay. So right now, there's tons of challenges in front of me that it seems like the mountain is just piling and piling and getting you know right. but at the same time i have moments of clarity i have moment once i have those areas right there moments of energy clarity mm -hmm. and just being able to stay the course then i go for it you know i, I work out i walk um i i go on tiktok um, I call a friend to talk. So that window of time, but there are times, Gordon, where the, the loneliness is just so overwhelming. You just want mm -hmm. someone to give you a, just a glimmer of hope, mm -hmm. right? And so I think also too, my mom passed away in 2014. This is activating a lot of things within my body as well too, and in my mind about how I wasn't there, that I was... Um, I was working a lot, just trying to make ends meet during that time. And it's almost as if it's a repeat pattern to this mm -hmm. day. And yeah. it's bringing up a lot of that. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I used to be so free to just get on a plane and travel where, wherever I want to travel, right? But now I have to attend to my businesses to make sure that what's going on with the economy, what's going on with our business. We all have things in place that would sustain our business, right? Mm -hmm. So that is pretty much where I'm at at this point and how I'm navigating through it. But what the one thing I do appreciate is these random, beautiful text messages from our colleagues and friends and families mm -hmm. just offering their prayer. I mean, that's I don't expect them to do much, but that in itself is enough. I mean, I've had a lot of, um, I had a handful of people offer some other things to me, you know, not the time, maybe even finances. Um, and that really, really helps out big time mm -hmm. with the psyche, especially in my spirit. Right, right. Yeah. One, one of the things you, you said that uh, I thought about was being able to recognize those small moments of joy uh, during a big period of just heaviness, mm -hmm. uh, being able to find those little, those little bits that just kind of show up that, right. like you said, give that little glimmer of hope of recognizing this is just a season. Uh, that's something I have to remind myself of every single day and it's kind of rinse, repeat. And, and like you, I, I draw a lot on my faith. Um, it's nice having a community around you uh, when you're, when you're going through these dark times, um, you know, and the same, at the same time, it's, it's like, uh, okay, I don't want to burden anybody with this, but it's nice to have them there. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I, I think you hit it on the, on the head right there, the nail on the head that you don't want to be a burden to people, you know, Eve, I, I, I'm honest about what's going through, you know, with me and, 
I'm honest about those things now. Uh, I think it used to be, hey, I'm fine just because I want to portray this. Uh, Ernesto's got it all under control. But man, this time of my life, it's I I I joke around. Um, you know, when people ask me, uh, you know, how are you doing? It's like, well, it sucks to be me right now, and mm. I wouldn't, <laughs> I would not want to put this on anyone. But at the same time, you know, when I say that out loud, um, I look back at uh, um, people of faith, right? And mm-hmm. and how they've made it. Uh, I've been watching documentaries of people who've been at their lowest point. And I do believe that I'm at the, that lowest point where they come back to become not only a testimony for other people, but a testimony to themselves as far as the resilience goes. So mm-hmm. I like hanging on to that i'm hanging mm-hmm. on to dear life right now and you know i'm sad i am i'm allowing myself to be sad i'm allowing myself to feel all the feels because you know when you have a a, a father who's fragile mm-hmm. and not being able to do that or to be there with him through this time you know it it and i wasn't like i wasn't there for my mom before uh, when she passed away, uh, I was there when she passed away. Uh, she was already in a coma, mm. um, but I didn't have a chance to say anything else, right? So this is bringing up a lot. And I'm telling you that the energy level that I experience every day, it's so, it, it's just a different feeling. I have more empathy for people who struggle with depression um, and anxiety. Uh, I have mm-hmm. so much empathy for them and uh, I'm more attuned. I'm more aware, you know, and when someone says, you know, this is a lonely, lonely place to be. Oh my gosh. I mm-hmm. absolutely get sure. it. I sure. understand it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And that's, um, that's, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, the thing about grief, at least what I know, what I've learned over the years, um, is it, uh, as I like to say, I'm going to put my old fart hat on of just the life experiences is, is that mm-hmm. grief is not something you get over. It's something you move through. Yeah. And when you're moving through it, it's just, um, it's hell. And it's, uh, I I can't, um, I don't know of any human emotion that's more intense than grief. I mean, just, uh, yeah. And so it's, uh, yeah. It brings up a lot, you know, when, when you're going through grief. And I I was telling a friend of mine yesterday, I don't know if you know, I'm pretty sure you know, Noreen Vanderhoeven, Mm -hmm. um, she, she and Debbie Frankel, um, Jenkins Frankel, they're both grief therapists with, you know, mm-hmm. EMDR bents. They're, they're, they're very, very st- steep in the knowledge of this. And I told Noreen yesterday, I don't know how you do this. This is, I mean, mm-hmm. if I can't even handle my own emotion, I can't even understand how you can handle everybody else. Well, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, and she, she went through this with her family as well too, but mm-hmm. oh my goodness, it's, it's a daily, daily, dose of i'm gonna trust god mm-hmm. to get through the, this mountain um i've been in uh, uh i've been more in tune with my faith uh, at this point and making sure that uh, i stay as centered as much as possible mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so it, what are you learning about how to balance things during this period you know, nothing. <laughs> I <laughs> I yeah. am allowing myself to be extremely unbalanced at mm-hmm. this point, and it will come in because even the idea of balancing is very exhausting for many folks who are grieving. You know, mm-hmm. um, routine is a different thing. Um, I try mm-hmm. to get myself into a routine. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, the way that I look at it is through time. And not necessarily a balance perspective. It's time. It's wake up in the morning, do this, make sure I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe I do some devotions and prayer. So it's more about time. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I'm feeling an intense, overwhelming 
anxiety or depression, I try to get out as much as I can just for a drive, just to give me some relief, but also give myself some moments of silence and feel all the feels. Because mm -hmm. you and I know, many counselors know that uh, emotions come and go. Mm -hmm. Right, the ebbs and flows of life. That's that's what it is. So all I have to do is just sit down, feel all the feels, and just hang on to dear life as as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. So well, well, my heart goes out to you because I know this is a this is a tough period. Um, you know, I guess what the hope that I hang on to, and that, that, then this kind of the thing that I um, echoes with when I'm when I'm talking with my clients is. Um, the fact that this is a season, um, you know, anxiety has a way of tricking us into thinking we can't handle things, but we do handle it. It might not be without discomfort or without pain or without sorrow, but we do handle it and we move through it. And, um, it's, but it sucks when you're moving through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's excruciating to go through mm -hmm. it right yeah but it is it's it's part of life some people experience difficulty on a smaller scale and to them it is real and overwhelming mm -hmm. some of us has that uh the job effect mm -hmm. yeah yeah where everything feels like everything is just falling out of place uh, under uh arrest and it's like mm -hmm. You know, everything about you, your spirit, your body, everything, even the tone of my mm -hmm. voice, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's it's not the same. But I just have to be really, really be mindful of this is not only just a season, but this is a place where I could definitely flourish in the future. So, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that that's going to be the case. I think there'll be a there'll be a great book and memoir to come out of this. And mm -hmm. um yeah, maybe we can, maybe we can collaborate on that. <laughs> Heck yes, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, chapters yeah. and chapters of all this type of. I mean, I can't even imagine what you go through as well, too, yeah. because, yeah. you know, I remember you talking about that a couple of years ago, or maybe last mm -hmm. year, and yeah. and you know, you've been doing it for years before that, and yeah, right. that's some difficult situations. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, well, I just, uh, I say this not as advice giving, but I know, um, you know, I experienced my dad's, my dad's death in 2019. And um, what you, what you describe of what your dad is going through now is exactly what my dad was going wow. through. He was uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's and, um, you know, what you said earlier about being a uh, being a toddler in a man's body and, you know, and not recognizing the fact that he can't get up and, you right. know, the caregivers trying to do their best to keep him settled and all of that sort of thing. So I understand very well what that's like, but I will say one of the, one of the, the holiest moments I can say in my life or one of the most valuable um, times I can say is, is having been with my dad when he did pass. Mm. Um, and wouldn't trade that for anything. Beautiful. Um, but it's, yeah. And so no, for, for some folks, this might sound kind of morbid, but it's, you know, it's, um, it puts us, puts us at a different level, spiritually, emotionally, all of those kinds of things to where the other bullshit in life doesn't really matter. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like that. I like that. There, you put things into perspective, you know, when you're faced with such profound passing, you know, mm -hmm. of life and spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nothing else yeah. matters after that. Right, right. Well, well, Ernesto, I appreciate your vulnerability, especially during this during this season. And I'm so glad we've connected. I know we're going to be getting together for a retreat here soon. Yeah, yes, and yes. yeah. And so I know in the midst of this, you're still working on putting together retreats and summits. And so mm -hmm. you want to say what you've got coming up and things that might be of interest to people. Yeah. Yeah. So London is coming up in a few weeks, but um, you know, next year I'm hosting at my homes, the entrepreneur retreats. 
So mm-hmm. that's going to be fun. Um, I'm going to be hosting at my houses here in Vegas. <clears throat> and so just trying to get everything all prepared for that. If you are interested in doing your own retreats at my properties, absolutely. You are welcome to do that. So, mm-hmm. yes, well, that's good. That's great. And, uh, you know, I will say that, um, the times that I have grown the most in just looking at my my own career over the years has always been on a retreat. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you go and you get a totally new perspective by being around other people That's right? And, and allowing yourself to be vulnerable and putting yourself out there. And it's a, uh, it's a uh, retreats are a wonderful way to get very introspective, but also just learn from others Mm -hmm. and also allow that there's an element of caring that comes from retreats as well, where you receive from people just kind of validation and, and just, um, yeah. There's a nurturing aspect of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So absolutely. Well, um, tell folks how they can get in touch with you, Ernesto. Yeah. Well, you can get on Facebook. Uh, I'm there. Uh, and also on Instagram, it's not hard to find me. I'm also on uh, um, cavacademy.com. Um, you can you can subscribe to my YouTube chat or my my website, my newsletter, and all that stuff. So yeah, that's how to get a hold of me. Right, right. And we'll have links in the show notes and the show summary. And I, I appreciate this conversation. Um, that's um, and I hopefully, too. hopefully, we didn't bring people down too much. But uh, I think it's important stuff for people to hear. Absolutely, we'll get we'll get through all of this. If you're yes. struggling, you know, we'll we'll get through it. Right, right. Well, take care, my friend. Well, a big thanks to Ernesto for joining me on the podcast and and for being so vulnerable. I think um, as you as you picked up, Ernesto has been going through some really dark dark times for himself, and I'm I'm so glad that we've connected and that we're supporting each other through some uh, dark times and just some tough stuff in life. And, um, I think that's one of the things that is so important for us to remember. We know this intellectually as therapists and counselors, but one of the things that can happen is, is we can get ourselves too isolated just in our own grief and our own struggles with life along the way. And, and I will say that, um, if you are struggling with similar issues, feel free to reach out to me. I'm sure Ernesto would love to hear from you as well. And we'll be glad to uh, provide some support um, just around these issues, particularly if you're like a caregiver. I know that that's something that has really been helpful for me is just to have conversations with other people that are in that caregiving role, whether it's for a spouse or a parent or a child or or whoever. And um, yeah, it's um and and you, we can't do it alone and that's one of the things that I keep um, learning over and over again. So again, thanks to Ernesto and be sure and check out his things. Uh, be sure and check out his podcast. It's a great podcast. You're not so typical therapist. Uh, he does such a great job with everything. Everything Ernesto does, and also be sure to. Uh, check out his website. Again, there's no, there are links here in the show notes and the show summary and find out about the summits and retreats, uh, that, uh, he is sponsoring. Uh, I'm looking forward to being with, uh, with Ernesto here uh, towards the end of September uh, for a retreat that he's hosting and um, looking forward to being part of that. And also uh, be sure and check out the Practice Launch Club. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, if you're in those beginning stages of running a private practice or wanting to start a private practice, that's what the Practice Launch Club is for. It's a membership community. And if you are interested in that, go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash launch club. And when you sign up and enroll, be sure and use the promo code just uh, fall 20, excuse me, PLC fall 2023. The promo code again is 
PLC Fall 2023. And we'll have that in the show notes along with the links. And again, big thanks to our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. They are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers. As I As was mentioned, I use them in my practice and absolutely impressed with all the things that they're constantly improving and making better. And it makes the running of my practice practically seamless. I, I have to be careful about that, but it really does help us automate so many things and uh, keep those records and track appointments and file insurance claims and all the things that needs to happen on the back end in running a practice. So be sure and check it out, practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure and use that promo code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, to try them out for two months for free. So take care, folks. Looking forward to being with you in future episodes. I've got a lot of great guests lined up. Uh, I've got a packed schedule with the podcast here over the next several weeks and months. So take care, folks. You've been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. You can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting sitecraftnetwork.com. And if you haven't done so already, please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide, along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal accounting or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.